Welcome back in, Trey Lowell here with Lowell Productions. Today's video, we're gonna be hopping up into Final Cut 10. We're gonna be doing what I'd consider the basics. So starting a library, starting a project, we'll go from beginning all the way to exporting a short little project coming up next. All right, so this video is going to be more focused towards beginners, but who knows, maybe you guys can pick up something along the way. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and open up Final Cut. We're gonna start from scratch here, going up to the top, going to File, New, and then we're gonna go Library. Okay, and I actually am going to go to my G Drive because I've actually created this folder called FCPX Beginner Basics. So we're gonna come into that folder because that's where we're gonna want our library, everything to live. So we'll come up here and we're gonna save this library as FCPX Beginner Basics. Okay, and then we're just gonna hit save. And as you guys can see up at the top left, Basically, we have our library started. Now, at this point, you still have not made a project, which the project is going to be where we actually create our video. So the quickest way to create a project, whether if you want to go up to the top, file, new, project, or just hit command N. To me, that's the best way to do it. And once again, we're going to name this the same thing. Actually, we'll do today's date 6, I want to say 11, FCPX Beginner basics and we'll go into video we don't want to make it vertical we're going to just do 1080 for this one 24 frames apple pro res lt everything looks good and then hit ok and many of you guys will notice at the left here now you have your project we're going to go ahead and click into that and the next thing that we need to do is import our files quickest way to do that rather than going all the way up to top and going here import you used to do that it took forever we're going to hit command i when we hit command I, that is going to send us to where we can go to our devices. We're gonna go back to that folder we created earlier in our G drive, which was FCPX Beginner Basics. Come in here, and I'm just gonna hit command A, which is gonna highlight all the files, hit enter, and voila. At that point, we have all our files in here. Now that we have our project and everything, we got our files in here, let's just go ahead and we're gonna scroll through. Many of you guys, this is gonna be the format. All I'm doing with my mouse is scrolling through the footage. And if I find something that I like, so let's say I like this shot right here, I'm gonna hit I, which is gonna create an endpoint. And then if I want to scrub it with my mouse, I can do so, or where I hit I, I can hit J or L. J will go backwards, L will go forwards, and the more you hit it, the faster things will go. And then I'm gonna hit O for my out point, and then that means I can just drop and drag this file from up there. Kill the audio for right now. Uh, let's go find another shot. We're shooting with the GH5, and that's nice in focus. I actually think I do a rack pose from the GH5 to the lens, so we'll go from there. I see it hitting I to the Mikey lens, hit O for my out point, bring it on down into our timeline. And all this is magnetic as well, guys, which is kind of nice. I, fast forward here real quick, O for our out point, start it when it starts moving, which is right about there, hit I, O for our out point. So for this first shot, we're gonna do a little color grade. I'm hoping I actually shot it in camera as well as possible, but we're gonna come up here to the top and we're gonna go view and we're gonna do video scopes. And if many of you are not familiar with it, don't be ashamed, but this is the way that I can kind of lock in my colors, lock in everything and get a better understanding that it's like actually correct for the viewer experience. All right, so over here we have our scopes and basically what we're trying to do is not overexpose, which is gonna be 100 up here. And then our shadows are down here at zero. So my first initial reaction is, all right, I'm gonna come up here and click on this little triangle and that's where the color grading is starting. Some of you guys, it might actually go to a board first, which is this. This is not my favorite. I actually prefer a wheel. So I actually have it preset to go to color wheel. But if for some reason the board pops up, you're just gonna come click on this little down arrow here and then choose a wheel. And this is where the fun begins. All right, we're gonna start with the highlights. Like I mentioned, we don't wanna go above 100, but we're going to pull those up a little bit. I don't even have to look at the image. I just know that as long as I stay above 100, everything on here is not overexposed. And then 
I can tell down here at the bottom, you guys can see my arrow waving here, that the shadows are completely crushed. Now, I do like how it looks, but I'm just going to lift them just a little bit off there. And I'll tell you why here in a second, because then I'm going to come to my mid-tones and I'm going to crush those quite a bit to then bring that darkness back to it. And obviously I'm not at 100, but I like how it looks, what I'm seeing. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of saturation here in the highlights. Ooh, that's quite a bit, but I do like it. And then I'm also going to come here in the shadows and give it a little bit of vibrance um, or saturation. Now, if you guys want to see, this is where we're at. That is where we started. So boom, boom. I kind of like what I'm seeing. Personal preference. But we're going to then take a move to the next clip here. And you guys can kind of see on the scopes that it's a little overexposed right there in the middle. So we're going to come to our highlights, which once again, you can come over here. Most of you might pop up with board, but if you need to get to wheels, come here and click wheels. Boom, you'll have it. Mine's already preset. Um, we're going to bring down those highlights just a little bit. Down here in the shadows, lots crushed. So we're just going to lightly lift that up. Boom, boom. And then I'm going to actually bring that down a little bit, add some saturation over here in the highlights, do the same in the shadows. And that's where we're at. That's where we were. Now it could be argued, I could probably bring those highlights up quite a bit, but what I'm really trying to do is avoid the overexposing here in the middle of frame. So if I need to backtrack, I'm just gonna hit Command Z from where I was at, cause that's where I liked it. And then boom, there we are. Get done with that clip, then we're gonna roll into our other clip here, which you guys can see on the scopes once again, definitely underexposed, so we're gonna bring that up quite a bit. Now here's what it's saying. It's saying this portion of the image right here, which actually coincides with here, up here is overexposed. Now that's gonna be a perfect personal preference if you wanna keep going up with highlights. And personally, I kinda do, just cause I don't find that too distracting yet. So I'm gonna lift those highlights up quite a bit more. Like I said, this, you can see coincides here, and that's okay with me because I wanted to bring all this up a little bit. We're going to bring our shadows up a hair here. And bring the mid totes down a bit, and then we're going to add a little bit of saturation in the highlights and a little bit in the shadows. And we, this is where we're at, and that's where we started. Boom. That's where we're at. That's where we started. So now we're going to move into the final step, and that's quickly just exporting I'm going to delete these final two clips since we didn't grade them, but exporting, this is going to be pretty simple for many of you guys, whether it's 1080, whether it's 4K, once you've done your grading, once you've lined up everything, I imagine you might have music and also, but from a beginner, beginner standpoint, all we're going to do, and this is going to make your computer work a little faster, we're going to deactivate those scopes, we're actually going to minimize our color wheels and everything, and we're even going to come over here to the left where our library is, and we're gonna minimize that as well. We want as little amount of things running or Final Cut doing when we're about to export. All right, so now we are ready to export. We have everything in line, and we're gonna come up here to the top right with this box and the arrow. Click on this. This is pretty much what all of you guys should see, and we're gonna click on Export File, which is default. So at this point, you guys can see the title, 611 SCPX Beginner Basics. We can see the details here. It's 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. It's a 15 second clip. We're gonna look at the settings though real quick. I have it for format of video and audio. That is gonna be for MOV files. Um, also H.264, if you wanna get fancy, you're gonna have all these other ways to export or I think a lot of you might do this as well, but you can click in here where it says audio and video and you can come down here to computer or you could do audio only, video only. But I tend to just do MOV. I think it gets a better format, a better higher resolution, but MP4 is great as well. And if that's the case, you would just click on computer. But we're gonna stay where we're at. We're gonna then come down here to next. Once we click on next, we want to make sure that we're exporting into our created file, which no, 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 this is not it. We need to go back into G Drive. We're gonna go to FCPX Beginners. What I like to do here is I like to create a new folder that says versions, create, and then make sure all our titles are good and we're gonna hit save. And at this point, you're going to give it a couple of minutes uh, depending on how big your file is, how big of a you know timeline, all the nooks and crannies, did you add titles, did you add animations, things of that nature, and oh, here we are, okay. So at this point, we are already done. We are ready to watch the video. And one thing I recommend when you go to watch your video, go ahead and close out Final Cut Pro. So we're gonna hit quit. 
And then once it's done, we can watch our video. I find that you get better playback if you do it that way. And then we're just gonna click here, boom. So I hope that quick tutorial for beginners gave you guys a little bit of understanding of the workflow or particularly my workflow when it comes to FCPX. Now, I know there's more ways that it could be done this way, but this is the way that I found to save the most space to be able to kind of go back and do whatever fixes, changes that I need. Also putting files in version folders means that I could quickly access all my past exported projects. But uh, hey guys, it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like the content I keep creating on this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.